I took this profitable day trade on Friday afternoon because I coded a strategy within Thinkorswim. Then I ran a comprehensive back test against that strategy to prove that it is profitable against the market. And that is what you all are learning how to do in this series. But so far on our series code, we just have it swing trading. We only have it running on the daily chart. And in today's video, you're going to learn how to utilize it in just day trading, just intraday trades. Hit the like button if you're enjoying the series. If you're learning anything, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss future episodes. And let's just jump into it. So a little lesson within a lesson here. I actually haven't at all brought this up yet. But if I go and click on another time frame here, this is now a one minute chart of SPY. Thinkorswim automatically runs your strategy code against whichever time frame you're looking at, which is really, really useful. But of course, I'm now looking at a one minute chart and it's holding trades overnight. It's entering trades. It entered this trade at four in the morning, which of course you most likely don't want to be doing as a day trader. You most likely don't want to hold your trades overnight. You don't want to be entering in pre-market. Maybe you only want to be trading the first hour of the day with this code I'm about to give you. You'll be able to block off any certain points of time to test your strategy on as well, because timing is very important with trading as well. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into the code, shall we? This is for the video series. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and give myself a couple lines here at the top. Everything we're going to define is at the top of the code. If you're looking at this and it looks like Chinese, you're probably not caught up with the series. Hit the link in the top right now for the playlist, catch up, then kind of get back to us here. So in coding, a computer has no understanding of what time is. It has no understanding of what market open is, market close is. You have to define all that stuff to a computer. It has no comprehensive knowledge like a human would have. So the first thing we have to do is define our open time. So we're going to define when the market opens and when the market closes. Essentially, I can actually call this. Let's maybe for ease sake, let's call this market open and let's call this market close. So, uh, we are going to give it variables. What did I say? Market close. We're going to give it variables, which instantiates what time the market opens and what time the market closes. We're not even on time yet, actually. We're just going to give it literal numbers here for this level, at the highest level. So uh, as we know, the market opens at 930. But also, as you know, with candlestick patterns or with candlestick charts, should I say, the you get no data until the mar until the candle is closed, right? So uh, this code will not be ran at all until the close of the candle that it is looking at. For that reason, and not to jump too much in depth or in detail, because this is not like a coding class. This is a, I want to teach you how you can make strategies class. So I'm not going to try to d dive too deep into how computers think, but we do have to set this to equal to 931 so that it doesn't hold trades overnight. If it's set to 930, it can end up holding trades overnight because it doesn't actually know that 930 candle exists until it closes. La di la, make it 931 if you're on a one minute chart. Now, if you want to trade on a, on a five minute chart, you have to make it 936 on a four or, or sorry, on a 10 minute chart, 941. You get the idea, but we're going to do this for a one minute chart right now. So make that 931 and same idea with market close, although a little bit maybe different uh, 24 hour clock first off. So market close is 4 p.m. 1600 hours. So the typical market close would be 1600. But same idea as uh, we can make a 1558, I believe, actually. You want to give yourself a little bit of a buffer room because it's got to wait for the candle to close. Then it's got to execute the code. Then it's got to get you out of the trade. So just make it 1558. Uh, that's 358, of course. And then let's move on. So now we have, we've told the computer, we've given the, we've given the computer at least numbers uh, for what time market opens and what time market closes. But it has no idea that that's time. It just knows those are numbers right now. So now we have to bring in some time functions. And thankfully, we don't have to define what time is I don't even know how you would do that to the computer there are out of the box functions that we can pull for this so uh, if we go ahead and define begin this is when our trading day is going to begin we want to be taking trades when the markets open uh, we're going to use the parameter seconds from sorry the formula seconds from time um, this is just it's going to be looking how many seconds away from uh, whatever variable you put in here is looking at and we are of course going to put in the variable market open is when we want to begin uh, and we'll get into defining how many seconds here in a second right now we're literally just we're taking what we've the the variables that we've told it turning them into some form of 
something that we can use as time. Uh, then we go ahead and define an end as well. So this is when we're going to end. This time we're going to use seconds till time and then we're going to put market close in here so this is the same idea seconds from time seconds from being after 9 31 and then seconds till being before 15 58 so let's go ahead and use that then if we define now our trading day let's actually put this on a separate line if we define our trading day we're going to define this as seconds from time till market opens so we need to be after 931. We need to be a positive amount of seconds after 931. So if we set this to begin, uh, being our seconds is greater than zero. Uh, so now it is only this, this definition is only going to be true, meaning it's only going to fire. It's only going to activate if we are at least one second after 931. And two conditions have to now be true in order for trading day to be active. Since we're using an and statement here, uh, end is greater than zero as well so we are also remember seconds till time we are now a positive amount of seconds before 1558 so the market is opening at 9 30 closing at six o'clock to find those variables instantiated those variables into seconds from and seconds till time functions and then we brought those functions into a statement that we only trade when the market's open essentially that's what we brought in here now this means nothing yet okay great we've defined our trading day remember you also have to append that onto your buy reasoning and so once again and this has to be true uh and trading day if we just type in trading day there that's what we call the uh, variable up here so and it's only going to buy if these two statements are true that we just defined up here if we go ahead and hit apply you should see that there are no more trades being entered after hours represented by the lighter gray boxes here no trades are now entered after hours but if we look at this case right here you will see that it's still holding trades into after hours because we have not defined anything for our sell yet we only added something to our buy condition so let's jump back into the code because as a day trader you probably don't want to be holding trades overnight let's jump back into our code we have to define one more thing we have to tell the computer what the end of the day is right so if we go ahead and define end of day equals end and then we give this uh, actually let's do it down here it's gonna make more sense Let's get away from those variables. It's kind of an acting. We're going to space them so the, the acting upon uh, variables are all together. Uh, end of day equals and end is less than 121. So there are less than two minutes till the market closes is defining end of day for us. And once again, we have to make it two minutes because... That's the way candlestick patterns work. You have to give it some kind of buffer. I'm not going to dive too deep into why you have to code it like this because this is not supposed to be a coding lesson as much as it is a I want you all to know how to get strategies into thinkorswim. So if you have any specific questions, please ask me in the comment section down below. But just know on a one minute chart end less than 121, uh, less than two minutes this is in seconds, of course, uh, we are looking end is seconds till time. So two minutes that's going to ensure that you don't hold trades overnight on a one minute chart. Once again, if you want to use a five minute chart, you have to add, you know, you have to make this a different number, a larger number for a larger buffer away because you're looking at five minute candlesticks, of course. Now we need to append this onto our cell, but guess what? If I just do this, so in end of day, just like I appended that it only enters trades when the market's open as an and now everything in buy the RSI has to be below 40. The close has to be over the 200 MA uh, and the candle must be above previous candle and it must must be market open time right all of those have to be true and then it sells when it breaks the highest point of the last 100 bars um what if i had this as and end of day it would only sell if the day was over and it was above the sell condition but we just we don't want to hold into market close at all so we're going to use an or uh, conditional formatting statement here that means if either one of these conditions is true this parameter is true and will fire vis-a-vis -vis, it will sell your shares so let's go ahead and hit blah, 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 blah. let's go ahead and hit apply now and you will see that it has exited the trades before market close and actually tried to enter another one here but you can see it didn't because they're kind of competing with each other is that because i made this uh nine or 1558 if i make this 1557 that'll go away i gave it maybe a little bit too much buffer room yeah because i have to make that 1558 so what it was doing there the buffer was Two, within two minutes and I'm only and I'm only calling end of day within 
anything after two minutes, right? Or anything before two minutes. So it tried to enter, but it was, I, it, whenever you see an entrant and a cell condition together, you'll get a bar like that. But we can fix that easily by just making sure this buffer is... Uh, slightly less than this buffer so both conditions can't be true at the same time now you will notice that because of the buffers we put in it's actually selling four minutes before the market's actually closed and that's fine you have to have those buffers in there to ensure that the sell condition is true so that it doesn't hold overnight but let's make one quick tweak that makes it actually sell the last bar of the day right we don't want it selling four minutes early and we could do that very easily if i come in and i add a to our end of day in our sell condition if I make it plus four here, uh, like I said, I told you all earlier, we taught you all before, you can use bracket number bracket to make the code act on other bars into the future or past. If we just put four into the bracket on end of day here, then we hit apply. You will see that it actually is selling the last bar of the day now. So now you have in our code, we have coded it so that you can utilize time frames to make it only day trade. If you want to use strategies, you can only day trade now. And you can even change this if you want market close i say i only want to trade the first hour of the day well if i make it 10 30 guess what now it's only going to enter trades and it will exit them at 10 30 as well uh, get out of the trades here at 10 30 uh, only trading the first hour of the day so you can come in and utilize that code in any sort of way you want to as well for specific time frames so now we have turned the code into something that can be used for day trading i know it's a little complicated sorry whenever you start dealing with time in computers that's kind of as complicated as it gets, at least at the elementary level of coding. And I'm trying to keep this as high level as possible. Once again, any questions in the comment section down below. But for now, hit the like button if you enjoyed. If you learned anything, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss future episodes. And I'll see you all in the next one.